he not say it? Out loud, code monkey not crazy Just proud, code monkey like Speedos Code monkey like Tab and Mountain Dew Code monkey, very simple man With big, warm, fuzzy, secret heart Code monkey like you Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to be focused on BIOS modding the Asus ROG Strix 5700. Now this is the one in the last video you saw us do the unboxing on and we were able to get the 5700 XT BIOS on there. But we didn't do anything with Red BIOS Editor, we didn't do anything with MPT tools, we didn't spend much time on that. All we did was see what happened with the stock BIOS and it wasn't super impressive to be honest with you, I was a little bit let down. So today we're going to see if we push this thing, how much further can we get, can we get anywhere close to the XFX 5700 XT that you saw in a previous video. We were able to hit a max of 61.5 mega hash on that with no rejected shares for a short time before we started focusing on more efficiency and I think we were at 60.8 for about six hours. Um, after we shot that. So it was really solid, but you know, along with spending a lot of time on the BIOS mods and just going through different iterations and command line, I think we hit a bit of the silicon lottery with this card. Otherwise, no matter how much BIOS modding I did, it, we wouldn't have been able to hit those numbers. So, but yeah, let's see if the ROG Strix can get anywhere near that today, guys. Okay, so I just wanted to point out the test rig that we've got up and running for today. What we've got here is a gold HP server power supply a bronze ATX power supply. The bronze ATX power supply is just powering the system. So that is plugged in to right here. So this is the primary kilowatt that is collecting all of the power for the system and the GPU. Now, the 5700, we have the breakout boards. We've got three cables, one going into the riser and two coming into the 5700 that's coming directly into this kilowatt right here. So you can see we're at about 135 watts right now on the GPU and the riser. Now I wanna explain something. I actually showed this in a previous video that the wattage is a little bit higher when you break things out with the HP server power supply and the kilowatt. Now the HP server power supply is running anywhere from five to 10 watts because it's got its own power for the breakout board, internal components and fan. So five to 10 watts there, and then the kilowatt is running between one to two watts is what's been reported. So we're looking at about 12 watts on this. I thought to be conservative, what we're gonna do for our at the wall reading here is subtract five watts. Now let me point out real quick where we are. So we are mining at 52.1 mega hash, and this is on stock settings. I have not modified the BIOS at all. We're at 800 on the voltage, we're at 1250 on the core clock and 1800 on the memory. Now I've toyed around with this a bit since that first video that we did and I can get this GPU upwards of 53 to 53 and a half mega hash per second on F out of the box but just the most stable settings is what you're looking at right here. It was just real easy to keep this stable and keep in mind we do not have the flash BIOS for the 5700 XT. This is just the stock 5700 BIOS on here. So I'll give you just a quick close up of each. So we're at about 155 watts on the total system, 130 on the GPU and riser, and that's at 52.1 mega hash. Okay, just wanted to give you a quick look at our idle wattage. So we're not mining anything, and right now the GPU, the riser, and the power supply breakout board, those are accounting for about 21 watts. And then total for the system, right over here, we're at roughly 40 watts, which includes the Zotac B150 motherboard, ATX power supply, and then everything that's plugged in to this main power supply right here. Here's something I wanna show you real quick. Check this out. Notice that the fans are off, and I've got the fan speed pegged at 80%. The fans are off on this GPU, and we're at 130 watts. Now there's a new fan technology that ASUS has included with this model and what it's doing with the stock BIOS is the fans are spinning up and then they're turning off. They're spinning up and they're turning off. Now we are cool, we're at 52 degrees Celsius and you can see right here we're at 86 degrees Celsius on the memory so it's not awful. There we go, so it just spun up and look at this, we're at 137, 136 watts. 
Now it's powering down. You can hear the fans go off and now check this out. Down to 129 watts. So when these fans spin up, they're using about six to seven watts. And it's just interesting, I haven't had GPUs that really do this the way that this one is handling the fans. And we can play around with this in the BIOS a bit, but I wanted to call that out for you so that you could see what I was seeing here as you're, as you're noting your differences in wattage between fan spinning and fans not spinning. So there we go, spinning up again. Notice the wattage jump. All right guys, I wanted to walk you through the BIOS changes that I made here, and I'm gonna show you what I did screen by screen in MPT and then in Red BIOS Editor just because I know folks are gonna ask. Now, I will say this, we did test the 5700 XT BIOS, and right here, you can see up here, these are the different BIOSes that I went through, and I had at least five. There was a couple others that I actually deleted, but we'll call it five, and two of them were with the XT modifications. We changed the memory timings on the XT BIOS, and we also made some adjustments in more power tools and it just was so crashy. It, we were wasting time messing with that. So we went back to the 5700 stock BIOS and the one that worked out the best was the second one that I put together. And I just wanted to show you the differences in more power tools uh, of what I did here. So right here is the before, this is the stock 5700 BIOS. And over here is the after, the version two that we're gonna stick with right now now, like I said, first of all, you're gonna get probably the best bang for your buck just changing these memory timings right here. So copying the 1550s over to the 1800 and beyond, and then the second memory type doing the same thing here, 1550 to all of these. But in more power tools, if you come to overdrive limits right here, this is where you'll see the first changes that I made. Now, let me say again, I wanna say this in every video, do not make any BIOS modifications if you're not comfortable with it or if you don't wanna take on the chance of bricking your card. And preferably your GPU will support at least two BIOS so you can have a switch on there in case you crash one of them, which I did many times. I, if you wanna call it bricked, uh, the, the performance BIOS, I did that probably five times and had to flash that BIOS from the backup, the silent BIOS. And that just gets a little sketchy when you're doing that. So if you've got a single BIOS, make sure that you follow instructions to set an out, maybe a batch file or something like that for you to recover that, that BIOS if something goes wrong. And just a reminder of the Gamers Nexus link that I put in the last video that kind of walks you through how to do that. I'll put it in this video link as well. Now my goal with more power tools was a couple things. I wanted to get the cap of the memory off in case I was able to go to 1900 megahertz or beyond, which in the end I really wasn't. I was also wanting to drop the power limits on the card itself so I could get below 800 millivolts. And then I also wanted to do something with those memory temperatures we saw that were getting into the mid 90s with the stock BIOS. So I'll show you again the few things that I did here. First of all, I changed the memory max clock right here, this one, from 930 to 1050. And that's it on this page. And if you come to power and voltage, max voltage stayed the same for GFX and SOC. Now the minimum voltage right here, I changed both of these from 800 to 700. And I hard coded the power limit to 160 watts in the BIOS right here. And the reasoning being, if this was staying in a gaming machine, I would want that to you know, have the opportunity to, to max that out, but it's not. It's gonna be going into the mining cave and I don't want there to be a situation where it runs rampant with some overclocking software. So I went ahead and capped that. I probably could have gone down to 150 watts, but I capped that at 160. Frequency stayed the same, curve stayed the same. And if you come over to fan, I changed the PWM minimum percentage from 30% to 50%, the fan acoustic limit RPM from 1500 to 2000, the fan target temperature from 75 degrees Celsius to 65 degrees Celsius, and the stop temperature, I set that to 40 degrees from 56, and the start temperature at 55 instead of 61 just setting the fans a little bit more aggressively to try to keep those temperatures down. And it seemed to have worked. I mean, the, the memory temperatures dropped about 10 degrees Celsius. 
Yeah, so like I said, I went through about five or six different BIOSes and you know, this may be if you're wanting to max out the efficiency of your card, you may have to spend half a day or a day with it. Okay, so here we're at 850 millivolts and in the command line, I've got it set to 756 millivolts. Core clock is 1350, the memory clock is 1830, and you can see down here we are getting 56.387 mega hash per second. And right here is the wattage at the GPU. This includes the riser, and again, account for let's call it 5 watts for the power supply here. So between 133 to about 127 watts. For the GPU itself. So pretty good efficiency with this BIOS mod and this overclock. GPU is staying really cool at 40 to 41 degrees Celsius and check this out the memory is at 72. Look at that it's bouncing between 72 and 74. Yeah so I'm pretty happy with where this ended up. I mean I, would I like to see it at 59 or 60? Absolutely. But I think this is pretty standard for what you're going to see out of a BIOS mod at 5700. The best results we got with this were the 56 to 57 mega hash per second that I showed you and that yields about 0.44 mega hash per watt at the wall. And the settings that I had, we were at 1275 on the core clock, 1850 on the memory and 756 millivolts. And the way I had to set that was using the dash CV DDC command in the command line to get that to take 756. Otherwise, Afterburner was just stuck at 800. Now, so that was the best result. We were at 56 to, let's call it 55.9 to 57, somewhere in there, but which is about four to five mega hash short of the XFX 5700 XT that we tested. But still, that's pretty respectable for the 5700 card, the 5700 lineup. All right, that'll wrap it up for today, guys. We spent so much time in Windows, just a bit frustrated, to be honest with you. We really didn't get the same results that we were looking for, or really anywhere close to that XFX card, the RAW 2 edition. So, yeah, uh, I'll be honest with you, I'm a little bit let down. I mean, what would I say about this card so far with the BIOS modding I've done is I could get decent results, I think maxing between 56 and 57 mega hash in Windows. You know, would I recommend it if you're looking for just an average run of the mill 5700 to mine on? Probably, I mean, the construction is really solid. You know, when you feel it in your hand versus some of the other cards, I mean, and quite frankly, even versus the RAW 2, which got much better performance. Like I said in that video, it has a little bit of a plasticky feel to it. And the Asus ROG Strix, I mean, it just, it feels like a really solid constructed device. So, yeah, I mean, if you get it at a good price like I did, then absolutely go for it. But know that you're probably getting a middle of the road card. now. All of this is aside from the silicon lottery, which just, it goes out the window, right? With any card, you just don't know. All right, so I wanna take a couple minutes just to talk about some of the things that we liked about this card. And first and foremost was the price point that we got it at. Now, the XT version of this can run upwards of about $430 to $450 US, depending on where and when you get it. At the time of recording, the way that I got this card and the reason I purchased it sort of blindly, to be honest with you, is I got it at about $339 US. And as quickly as they went up for sale, within moments after I bought one, they were gone and sold out at that price point. So I'm not gonna complain a whole lot considering the run-up in crypto here recently and how the price of cards have taken off as a reflection of that. Now, after BIOS modding this card, we did get some really good results with the temperatures. Initially, we didn't. The memory temperature was upwards of 90 to 95 degrees Celsius, but after BIOS modding, and we went in and sort of uh, aggressively, I would say, reconfigured those fan control settings, which you know I showed you in the video, we started getting some decent results. It was holding within the 70s and 80s on the memory temp, and the GPU temps on pretty much all the 5700s stay very respectable as it is anyway. Now on the BIOS and BIOS modding this card, I want to say a couple things. First off, on the construction of the card, I do like that this particular model has dual BIOS. And multiple times we crashed the card and we bricked an individual BIOS, you know, or did a, a light bricking of it anyway. 
that we were able to recover because we had the silent mode that we could back up to and then reflash the performance mode and then keep going and we were off and, off and modding and, and hashing still. But if it didn't have that, it would have made life a whole lot more difficult. So that was one of the nice things about it. Now, there's a lot of discussion in the forums suggesting not to BIOS mod this car and that's completely up to you. If you get decent results out of the gate with it, just stick with that probably is the best bet. It's got the LEDs, which you can turn off, save you two watts or so there and it's no big deal, but every now and then when you look over at your rig and you wanna just kinda of see it shine a little bit and have, have a little bit of fun and kick back with a beverage, you can turn those LEDs on and it looks, it looks kinda of fun. So who is this card not for? Anybody that's wanting to heavily BIOS mod the card or if you've already seen performance on some other models that you would rather give a try to, then go ahead and give those a shot, especially if you can get them at a price point anywhere similar to what you can pick this one up at. But like I said before, if you can get it at a good price, go for it. All right, so I'm gonna continue to play around with this card. We're gonna try to get it up and running in Hive. I would like to get this out in the shed on Hive, but honestly, if I can't match the results I'm seeing in Windows, we may have to put these things on Windows rigs because the Hive drivers just seem a bit behind. We'll wrap there for today, guys. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you've got any suggestions on how to improve the performance we saw on this card, I would love to hear it. I'll take any suggestions you've got because right now I would say we're going to be putting this into production with just run-of-the-mill performance here. All right, see you in the next one, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.